Hi everyone, welcome to this video. We're going to discuss now exercises 7th to 12th of chapter 29, The Monetary System, Principles of Economics. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw. So, 7th question says, The Fed conducts a 10 million open market purchase of government bonds. So, here we have an open market of 10 millions. If the required reserve ratio is 10%, so, well, what are the largest and smallest possible increases in the money supply that could result? So, first, when there is an open market, uh, the Fed provides more, more money supply because Fed conducts uh, purchasing, so then injects money into the economy. So then, remember that the exercise provided uh, and required reserve ratio of 10%. So imagine the situation of the largest change in money supply. So all these 10 millions, it goes to deposits, it goes to the banks, and it starts to move from bank to bank as we represented during the chapter, that just 10% remain in the bank, 90% goes to another bank, and then so on and so forth. So then uh, the multiplier in this case is 10. Remember, this is the reciprocal. 10% is exactly equal to 1 over 10. So it means that the multiplier is going to be 10. Then we are expecting an increase of 100 millions. The smallest result possible should be that all 10 millions goes just to currency, it, that, it, they don't go to the deposits, they don't go to banks, so then there is no increase at all. 8. Assume that the reserve requirement is 5%. All other things being equal, will the money supply expand more if the Fed buys 2,000 worth of bonds or if someone deposits in a bank 2,000 that she had been hiding in her cookie jar? If one creates more, how much more does it create? Support your thinking. So, well, I thought in this way, maybe you can think another way. Uh, please explain to our community if you think this in another way. From my side, I guess that the ratio reserves in this case is 5%. So, the buffet buys 2,000. Imagine uh, this case when when they, they buy bones, we know that the increase there is an increase of money supply. So then we have uh, 2,000 deposit in a bank. So it depends on behavior after the operation. Imagine the situation that uh, it goes to from bank to bank with a reserve of 5%. So then this 5% is exactly equal to 0 0.05, which means 1 over 20. 1 um, over 20 is exactly equal to 0 0.05. So then the the money will multiply 20 times so then uh, this should be the case if it's going bank to bank as i said so we have here 20 times 2000 which we have at the end 40000 however uh, it's important to take into account that the that the first payment from fed shouldn't be held as reserves. It's something, maybe, I don't know if I go beyond, but uh, when you make a deposit to your bank, automatically, this is a deposit. So you need to fulfill your reserves requirement. However, the Fed is just actually, they, they, they buy titles, they buy assets from the bank, which are the bones, so this money don't, don't enter properly, this money doesn't enter properly as a deposit. So for this case, I can infer in some way that there is not held as reserve this 5%. So these two, 2,000, these can go to another place. So then imagine this situation, the Fed situation, it increases more. So, the impact of Fed is higher. 9. Suppose that the reserve requirement for checking deposits is 10% and that banks don't hold any excess reserves. If Fed sells 1 million of government bonds, what is the effect on the economy's reserves and money supply? So then, 
uh, here we have a reserve a requirement of 10% and when Fed sells bonds automatically the money supply decreases because the Fed um, takes money from the economy instead of providing titles instead of providing this bond these bonds so the money supply decreases so the reserves they need to be paid to pay bonds they need to be used to pay bonds so the banks need to take money from the available money that they have in this case the reserves to pay the bonds but they need to fulfill the 10 percent so to recover this reserve requirement they need to decrease loans in order to put this money back to the reserves so then the reserve will be lower but then uh, but then I mean the reserve will be lower but then it's still 10% due to a decrease uh, uh, in the loans until balance the reserves 10% of total deposits. So then the money supply will decrease. B. Now suppose the Fed lowers the reserve requirement to 5%, but banks choose to hold another 5% of deposits and excess reserves. Why might banks do so? Do so? What is the overall change in the money supplier and the money supply as a result of these actions? So then, we know that the now the change is the reserve requirement is going to be 5 instead of 10. So banks, uh, in this case, they try to be risk averse. They try to prevent some bank run that people go to make a lot of withdrawals. So they try to prevent some, some run. So the money supply will remain exactly the same. Assume the banking system has total reserves of 100 billion. Assume also that required reserves are 10% of checking deposits and that banks hold no excess reserves and households hold no currency. So what is the multiplier? What is the money supply? So the total reserves are 100 billion and the reserve ratio is 10%. So then the reserve ratio we can express as 1 over 10. It means that the money multiplier is 10. So we have here uh, the the well the, the money supply should be actually the deposits and the deposits are the reserves plus loans. So here I express like reserves plus deposits. So the reserve ratio is going to be the reserves over over deposit. Deposits is equal to reserves over reserve ratio it goes down these d's go up because um, it goes dividing and these go to be in the other side so then the deposits should be 100 over 0 0.1 so then deposits should be 1000 so the money supply should be this 1000 plus the reserves that we had which it was 100 billion so we have 1100 billions billion as a money supply. Assume that B, uh, if the Fed now rises required reserves to 20% of deposits, what are the change in reserves and the change in the money supply? The total reserves, they are still 100 billion. Now the reserves ratio is 20%, so it means a reserve ratio uh, of 1, 1 over, over 5. It means that the money multiplier is 5. So here we have the, the money supply, the reserves plus deposits, reserve ratio. We make exactly the same operation as before. And then we have 100 over 0 0.2, which is the um, which is the reserve ratio. It exactly, it has a deposit of 500. 500 plus 100 billion. We have now a money supply of 600. Why we have here different? Because the reserves, they increased on automatically it makes a... Uh, a higher change because of the money multiplier decrease from 10 to 5. 11. Assume that the reserve requirement is 20%. Also assume that banks don't hold excess reserves and there is no cash held by the public. The Fed decides that it wants to expand the money supply by 40 million. A. If the Fed is using open market operation, will it buy or sell bonds? Well, the reserve ratio is 20%, so they need to fulfill a money supply plus 40, not billion, should be million, so it should be better M or MM million, and then, uh, well, should be billion, and then Fed should buy bonds. Automatically, when they buy, buy bonds, they inject money into the economy, so then the money supply increases. 
B. What quantity of bonds does the Fed need to buy or sell to accomplish the goal? Explain your reasoning. Well, the reserve ratio is 20%. So the reserve ratio is 1 over over 5. So it means that the, the effect of the bar of the Fed will be 5 times. So this is the quantity that Fed should buy bonds. So then, the quantity of Fed should buy bonds should be exactly equal to the increase that they want to accomplish over the multiplier. So the increase that they want should be 40 million over the multiplier, which is, is not 4, it's 5. So then, it's not going to be 10 this is going to be not, uh, oh, this is going to be 40 over 5 which is 8 so 8 million needs to be bought by the fed uh, uh, 12 the economy of elmendin contains 2000 all in 1 dollar bills a if people hold all of money as currency what is the quantity of money so it means that there are no banks so we have 2,000 times 1, the bill, so we have $2,000 into the economy. This is the quantity of money. B. If people hold all the money as demand deposits and bank maintains 100% reserves, what is the quantity of money? So if we have 100% uh, reserves, it means a ratio of reserves that is exactly equal to reserves over deposits. So they are the same, 2,000 over 2,000. So we have that the ratio of reserves is equal to 1, so the multiplier is 1. So the money supply is exactly 2, 2,000. C. If people hold equal amounts of currency and demand deposits and banks maintain 100% reserves, what is the quantity of money? So, it's exactly the previous one. Just like uh, here we have the money supply to, to, to 2000. If people hold off money as demand deposits and banks maintain a reserve ratio of 10%, what is the quantity of money? So here, we have currency is 2000 and deposits at zero. It doesn't matter the reserve ratio. It could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever you want. But because if it's not into the bank, the multiplier doesn't exist. It, because the multiplier, if we have, for example, 10%, we know the multiplier is 10, but 10 times zero is going to be zero. E. If people hold equal uh, amounts of currency and demand deposits in bank maintain a reserve ratio of 10%, what is the quantity of money? So in this case, naturally, it's a different, it's a different case because we have here a currency of, of 1,000. On the other side, we have the deposits that they are 1,000 as well. So we have that now the ratio, ra ratio reserves should be reserves over deposits. So we have 100. Which, is the, which are the reserves, because it's the 10% over the deposits, so we have a ratio of reserves of 10% that we already have provided by the exercise. So it means that the multiplier should be 10. So the demand's deposit should be 1,000 times 10 plus the deposits that we have here. So then the all demand deposits, they are 11,000. But remember that the quantity of money is exactly equal to the currency plus the deposits. The deposits, they are uh, 11,000 plus 1,000, so we have 12,000, okay? That's all for these last exercises. I, I hope you have learned something new, you have clarified your doubts. I'm more than open to hear uh, your questions, concerns, suggestions, or other ways to solve these exercises. Please, please subscribe, please uh, stay healthy. Bye-bye.